What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. And if you can't already tell, this week's video is about my new dust collection system. So I have a brand new dust collector, all new duct work, all new automated blast gates. And this video is gonna cover how I set all of this up. And I'm super excited to have it finally installed and in place so I can get back to building kind of regular projects. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the video. Paul and James, the guys from Clearview, came out to my shop to help me with getting their new EF5 dust collector installed, and we got started by unpacking the unit and starting to get it assembled. So after Paul got the motor plate assembled, I went ahead and wired up the motor with a whip, just wiring it according to the instructions from Clearview. With the unit partially assembled, we moved on to unpacking the ductwork and then laying out the initial run coming from the dust collector. And I went with NordFab ducting this time around, and they're not a sponsor of this video, by the way. I paid for this ductwork out of my pocket. And NordFab is incredibly expensive, but it's also incredibly high quality, and most importantly for me, easy to assemble and make adjustments. And I figured this would probably be the last ductwork system I ever need to purchase, so I think the investment was probably worthwhile. The main advantage to NordFab ducting is their quick fit system which uses ring clamps to hold the different pieces together. And this creates an airtight seal that's incredibly secure, but easy to make adjustments to if needed. When laying out this initial run, we made sure we had one full section of straight pipe coming off the dust collector, and this just helps to reduce the turbulence in the air coming into the dust collector and helps to improve the efficiency of the machine. After the straight section, the line makes two 90 degree turns to raise the ducting to about 10 feet above the ground so that it's up and out of my way, which is something I really struggled with in my old shop. Also, I should mention that all the 90 degree turns here are longer 90s so that they don't restrict the airflow. Before mounting everything to the wall, we checked to make sure we had clearance from the wall for this section of ductwork, and this also determined where we mounted the dust collector. Next, I could get the dust collector mounted, and first I installed this wooden mounting panel that Clearview supplied into the studs, and with that attached to the wall, I could then attach the metal mounting bracket to the panel using lag screws. And while this mounting bracket isn't mounted directly into the studs, that's just kind of where the dust collector had to go, the lags are still grabbing over an inch of wood, and as you can see, it can easily hold me. With the bracket in place, we could get the first part of the cyclone mounted. And another nice thing about this metal dust collector is that the unit can be assembled in place so you don't have to try and lift the whole thing onto the bracket in one go. So after getting the first section in place, I could add the impeller housing on top of that. Next, we could lift the beast of a motor into place, which was a little bit awkward with that impeller attached. Finally, we could clamp on the cyclone and the main portion of the dust collector was pretty much assembled. And before moving on, I went ahead and wired up the contactor, which powers the system and also allows the system to be remote controlled. Once that was wired up, I mounted it onto the wall along with the IVAC switch, which I'll use to control the system. And then we could fire the dust collector up just for a second to make sure the impeller was spinning in the right direction, which it was. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> with the dust collector working, we could move on to getting the ductwork mounted. And this would have definitely been next to impossible to do by myself. And I'm extremely thankful to the guys from Clearview for coming out to help me with this process. So with Paul and I up on ladders, James could use a dead man to keep the section of ducting elevated while we worked on securing it. And we used plumbing strapping to secure the ductwork to the wall and ceiling. And all the different hole locations on this strapping make it really easy to adjust the height you're mounting the ducting. At first, we were having a little bit of a clearance issue just based on the angle the ducting was coming off of the dust collector, so we removed one of the mounting bolts from the unit, which just allowed us to turn the whole system slightly to get us off the wall a little bit further. Once that was done, we made more fine adjustments to the different angled pieces just to make sure we were running nice and level, and then we could get the first drop mounted. And this is the drop for the jointer and the table saw, and the jointer has a 6 inch port and the table saw has a 4 inch port. We added more strapping to hold this drop in place, and I also temporarily added the blast gate just to make sure I had clearance off the wall. And this strapping was also temporary as I came up with some more elegant mounts for the vertical drops, which I'll show you guys a little bit later. With the first drop done, we continued on down the line until we got to the next branch, which was for the planer and drum sander. And this was also the first section where we needed to cut one of the straight sections to length. And to do this, I used my porta band although a reciprocating saw or even a hacksaw would also work here. 
After cutting the pipe to length, I filed the edges just to remove any sharp burrs, and then we could assemble that run. And since the flange at the end of the straight section was cut off, we needed to use an adjustable nipple to mount this section to the rest of the run. To mount this branch, we once again used more plumbing strapping, but we had to attach it to the ceiling this time. And one of the acoustic panels I built in a previous video was actually in the area we needed to mount the strapping, but we just used it as one of our mounting points, which actually made things a little bit easier since we didn't have to drill into concrete. After mounting the branch, we assembled the rest of the drop, which ends with a 4 inch port for the drum sander and a 6 inch port for the planer. Next, we continued on down the line to the end of the first run, which ends in a drop for the bandsaw. And my bandsaw has two 4 inch dust ports, so this run ends with a 6 inch to two 4 inch wide. The last section to mount was the branch for what was originally going to be the table saw, but I decided to make it a branch for the miter saw and router table insert instead, since the drop was just really in the way when it was at the table saw. So with that, all the ductwork was in place, so we could finish up assembling the dust collector. So the next step was to get the filter stack assembled. We attached this flange to the upper filter, applying a bead of silicone, then attaching the flange with screws. We could then wrestle the flex hose that connects the dust collector to the filter stack onto the flange, which was kind of a pain, but we eventually got it on there. Once that was in place, we stacked the two filters, applying another bead of silicone between them, and then clamped them together. Before attaching the filters to the dust collector, we also added the dust bin, which is a 55 gallon drum in this case, which connects to the bottom of the cyclone with another short piece of flex hose. We could then attach the filters to the dust collector, which was another tight fit, and then the only thing left to do was to apply the decal to the cyclone. And by the way, if you're interested in purchasing one of these units or anything from Clearview, you can use my coupon code CRAFTED for 5% off, and also get a small commission when you make purchases with that coupon code. And Clearview is a great company. They're a small company and their products are super high quality and American made. And I definitely recommend checking them out if you're looking to upgrade your dust collection system. So with that, we could fire the dust collector up and test it out. And let me tell you, this thing sucks. All right, so now that all of the ductwork is hung up, it's time to get all of the tools themselves connected. And I'm gonna do that with a combination of flex hose as well as obviously some blast gates. In case you guys aren't familiar with dust collection, blast gates basically close off the air in each of these runs or drops. And basically that just keeps your system running as efficiently as possible, focusing all of the airflow to the tool that you're using at that point. So just like I used in my last shop, in my last dust collection system, I'm going with these IVAC blast gates again. These are completely automated. so. So when you turn a tool on, the blast gate opens, then it turns the dust collector on. When you turn it off, it does everything in reverse order. So super efficient, super quick. You don't even have to think about dust collection and it basically just does it all for you. So this is the four inch one. This is the six inch one, which I was using at the previous shop. To make them integrate with the NordFab though, for the four inch, you do need a little adapter, which is a custom part from NordFab. And then this just friction fits on here. I will add some silicone and maybe some sheet metal screws just to help kind of hold that into place. The nice thing about the six inch blast gates though is that they friction fit onto this duct work with no adapters needed. Every tool is gonna have a little bit of a unique setup. For instance, at the bandsaw, which I'll show you, I'm going with one six inch blast gate since the bandsaw does have two dust ports, but I'm always gonna want those both open simultaneously. So I'm going from a six inch blast gate to a 644Y, which then I'll have two runs of flex hose running off of that directly to the bandsaw. So another example of kind of a weird connection is at the planer, which kind of has an oddball size port of five inches. So I found a six to five inch reducer at the local home center, and I'm going from that to some six inch flex hose, then to a six inch blast gate, and then to the six inch ducting. So again, every tool is gonna to require probably a little bit of customization based on your exact setup, but I think once you've seen one of these go together, you'll have a good idea of how they'll all go together. Once I had all the blast gates attached to the ductwork with silicone and sheet metal screws, I could get the tools connected with some flex hose. At the drum sander, I went with a length of flex hose with one of Rockler's dust right handles on the end. And on the drum sander itself, I have a dust right fitting. And this just allows me to quickly remove the hose from the drum sander when I need to change out the sandpaper. Over the miter saw, I decided to add another dust collection port since I've never been that satisfied with the dust collection there. And I wanted to add a large dust hood, but first I needed to cut out an area for the dust hood. And I used a combination of a jigsaw and Japanese pull saw for this, and it was a little bit tricky working around some of the existing parts of the miter saw station, and I also had to cut through this cross support piece, which I again did with the pull saw. 
The edges of the hood have a beveled edge, so I got a little bit fancy and used a spoke shave and a rasp to try and match that bevel as best as I could. And once I had a good snug fit, I added some silicone and dropped the hood into place, and then added a bucket of screws to hold it in place while the silicone dried. And here's what the connection looks like from below, and the flex hose just runs behind the cabinets along the floor to the blast gate. I also wanted to create a mounting bracket for the flex hose at the table saw so that I could store it when it wasn't in use just to get it out of the way. And Rockler sells this little bracket kit and I whipped up a quick mount for it. So I got it mounted to the wall and then mounted the plastic fitting that holds the dust right handle in place. Next I mounted a dust right handle on a length of flex hose and then mounted the other end to the ducting. And as you can see this was actually before I added the blast gate here but I think you get the idea. So with the hose mounted, I could mount the straps which hold the hose in place against the wall. And then I mounted the brackets for the floor sweep and bench nozzle. The rest of the tools just connected with a regular flex hose, so after that was done, I could move on to adding the tool sensors for the IVAC system. These sensors detect the current running through the cord of the tool and send a signal to both the associated blast gate and the dust collector switch when it senses the tool has been turned on or off. The sensors just screw onto the cord and then you can make sure it's working correctly by checking to see if the red LED flashes when you turn the tool on and stops flashing when you turn the tool off. And to program each sensor to match the blast gate, there are a series of dip switches which just need to be set at each tool. And after everything is programmed, you can test out the system by turning your tool on and waiting as the blast gate opens and the dust collector turns on automatically. And the last thing to finish up, which I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, was a few custom mounting brackets to help secure those vertical drops. So I worked up a quick design in SketchUp and then exported an SVG into Easel, which is Inventable's free software, and then I could get to cutting the parts with the X-Carve. And these kinds of custom parts are really where the X-Carve excels, as I can cut the exact same part multiple times and know my dimensions are going to be perfect. I'll have a link to the X-Carve in the video description below if you want to learn more. And unfortunately, I zeroed my bit on the scrap piece of plywood instead of the actual piece of plywood on this first cut. So I did have to flip this piece and redo it, but this whole process went extremely quickly. I think each of these parts only took about four minutes to cut. Also, I'm loving this T-Track system. If you missed the video on that, definitely go check that out. It makes repetitive parts like this super simple. I could just unclamp two clamps, swap the piece of plywood, making sure it was butted up against that corner stop, and then just run the program again. While the X-Carve was working, I cut up the other parts for the brackets, starting at the table saw with the backer pieces. And these are the pieces which I'll actually mount to the wall, and I cut these strips to match the width of the back end of the U-shaped pieces. Next, I squared up some of the offcuts from the U-shaped pieces, which I wanted to turn into some triangular supports for the brackets. And after squaring them up, I taped the pieces together, drew a diagonal line through the middle, and then cut the pieces in half over the bandsaw. I cleaned up the edges I cut with the bandsaw at the oscillating belt sander and then removed the tabs from the U-shaped pieces with a flush trim bit on the router table. Assembling the brackets was super simple, I just used glue and inch and a half brad nails and I would set one of the U-shaped pieces up on a few pieces of plywood to set the spacing, then add some glue to the ends of the piece and I could then tack the strips into place with a few brads. Next I added some glue along two edges of the triangular pieces and then tacked those in place. And the nice thing about this design is that it squares itself as long as your cut pieces are square. After assembling the rest of the brackets, I pre-drilled some holes for power head screws and then partially drove in the screws before getting up on the ladder. Once I was up there, I realized that there was some interference with the quick clamp, even though I had left some extra room at the front of the U-shaped pieces, and I ended up having to scribe these brackets and notch out the brackets with the jigsaw. With the bracket notched out, I could attach the bracket to the wall, which held up the ducting nicely, and then I could call this dust collection system complete. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This project has been in the works for at least a couple of months now. Planning a system like this is pretty daunting. There are so many parts and pieces and you really need to know exactly where all your tools are gonna go so that you can lay out all these drops and make sure you have everything you need to get the system installed. Luckily, I was able to swap out a few parts with NordFab and get everything used up. I have no leftover parts, which is awesome because again, as I mentioned in this video, this stuff is super expensive. Just to give you an idea, the duct work for this project, not 
including the dust collector itself, was about $4,000 shipped to my shop here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Next week's video will be the long awaited shop tour. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for that. I've just kind of wanted to get the shop a little bit better set up before I shoot that. I still have a decent amount of work to do, but uh, that video will be coming out next week. So if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that and ring that notification bell so you don't miss that video. Also, I'll have links to all of the tools and materials and all that stuff in the video description below in case you're interested. Again, I do have a 5% off discount code if you want to purchase anything through Clearview. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And until next week, happy building.